Today we will talk of the interference of light. See in about 1600 Newton had proposed the that light is made up of particles in about 1600 and his theory was called the corpuscular theory of light and according to this light is made up of corpuscles or particles which are emitted from luminous objects. Now owing to Newton's authority at that time nobody, everyone accepted his corpuscular theory. Now in around 1680 a Dutch scientist named Huygens, now I, I don't know the correct pronunciation, uh, it's, uh, it's a Dutch name so I will just write down the spelling, this is Huygens proposed, Huygens proposed that light energy travels from one place to another by means of wave motion. Newton had talked of particles or corpuscles, but Huygens suggested that when light travels, it travels in the form of electromagnetic waves. However, at that time there was not much experimental evidence to support uh, Huygens theory. So it was much later on in 1801, it was much later on in 1801 that Young obtained experiment evidence to support the theory of light as a wave because he had shown through an experiment something that was known as interference and this is basically what we are going to talk about today. Now his experiment supported the fact that light behaves like a wave. So now Newton's corpuscular theory was rejected and Huygens wave theory was revived once again. And there were many other phenomena like diffraction, polarization etc which could be satisfactorily explained with the wave theory of light. So today we will be looking at Young's experiment in detail and because that was the experiment which provided evidence for the wave theory of light. The basic arrangement of Young's double slit experiment shows a screen A with the slit S in it and you have a screen B which has two slits in it say we call this S1 and S2 and these two are separated by a small distance d between them. This distance is d and you have a screen c on which we observe the pattern. We will see an interference pattern on this screen. The pattern will look something like this. You have vertical lines or fringes which are visible and this distance is capital D and you have a source of light which is placed over here this source is a monochromatic source. Monochromatic means a single color, a single wavelength. So this is a monochromatic source of light which is placed beyond the screen A. So light from this monochromatic source travels through slit S then through S1 and S2. This is S1 and this is S2 which is which are then going to act as two coherent sources and then we get the pattern on a screen C which is placed at a distance D. This is the experimental setup for Young's experiment. If you look carefully you will find that this is basically the same setup that we showed you in the previous diagram. Now over here we have screen A and this has one slit in it. So 
So let me just draw this. This has one slit in it and then we have screen B which has two slits in it. So we have two vertical slits shown over here S1 and S2 and we will observe the pattern on this screen C over here. So on screen C we will be able to see the pattern which is formed but uh, let us just st first start not with light but we are going to start with bullets. So we are going to fire bullets from a source and let us see what kind of a pattern do we get on the screen and our source of bullets is over here. So suppose we have a source over here. Now this is a source. Okay. Now first what we do let me just label this this is S1 and this is this slit is S2 and this is S. So what we are going to do is we are going to keep S1 closed and S2 is open. So now when we fire bullets, we will get something like this. We will get a steady stream that moves through this through S2 and you get a pattern on the screen. So what you see on the screen will be something that will look like this. We will get a stream of bullets hitting the screen over here. Okay. Now next if we keep S2 open. So next is S2 is open and S1 is closed. Sorry. S1 is open and S2 is closed. Because in the previous case we had S1 closed. So now S1 is open. So let us see what do we observe on the screen. Once again we will get a set of bullets which will travel through S and through S1 and they hit the screen over here and what do you find? You find that this portion over here you have the bullets hitting the screen here. Okay. Now, what would happen if S1 and S2 both are open simultaneously? So, which means that the bullets can travel through both S1 and S2. Do you think you would get something very different? I mean, you would have bullets traveling through S2 and through S1 and you would get a pattern on the screen. Okay, so now you see two bands on the screen C. And I am sure this is what you had expected to see when both slits S1 and S2 are open. Now we will watch very carefully what happens and how is the pattern different if we are going to use a light source instead of a source of bullets. So we are going to replace this source of bullets with a light source. Now let us see what kind of a pattern do we get. Now say this is S1 and S2 the two slits and we just talked about firing bullets through two slits. So in this case the bullets would travel in a path like this. So since the source is shooting bullets in all directions you can have a stream of bullets moving in this direction and for this we can also draw wave fronts. Wave fronts are basically a pattern which give you all points which are in the same phase or in the same state of motion. So we could draw wave fronts like this. The wave fronts are perpendicular to the direction of motion of a wave and then you have wave fronts coming in from here and they emerge from this slit and then again we have wave fronts over here. Now if we look at a situation in which we have light waves which are incident on the two slits S1 and S2 then the light waves are not going to travel like bullets. See what happens say this is an these are the incident wave fronts let me just draw them say we have a few incident wave fronts which are impinging 
on the slits so when they reach this then light over here is going to spread out see these slits are narrow the slits are narrow and the width of the slit which means this distance a over here is comparable with the wavelength of the incident light the width of the slit is comparable with the wavelength of the incident light waves which are coming from this side so in that case the light waves are going to get diffracted they flare out so you don't have them moving in a straight path as in case of bullets so the light which reaches here which reaches the two slits spreads out or it gets diffracted so now what you are going to observe on a screen which is placed over here beyond these two slits is going to be an interference of these two waves which are produced by the two sources it is a it is the interference pattern or the overlapping of the waves which are produced due to diffraction at the two slits s1 and s2 unlike the bullets since the light waves spread out after emerging from the narrow opening they overlap each other and so these light waves undergo interference and form an interference pattern that is seen on the screen you will see fringes like this will be visible on the screen so instead of just two lines i mean you just don't have two regions if i were to place a screen over here i would have one region over here which has bullets and another region over here which has bullets so you might be wondering that at times you know for the interference pattern i might have drawn the the fringes in this direction and at times i might have drawn the fringes in this direction see that would depend on the the way you are showing the slits on the screen if the slits on the screen are vertical in that case you would get a vertical pattern whereas if the slits are in the on the screen are horizontal like this you would get a horizontal pattern since over here in this diagram i have shown a pair of horizontal slits see the slits are actually in this direction so you would get a pattern on the screen which would be horizontal fringes okay now coming back to what we were discussing earlier now when is this interference pattern visible for the interference pattern to be visible we have two es essential conditions that need to be satisfied first is the coherence of the light waves first is coherence now what are two co coherent sources two sources that maintain a constant phase with respect to each other are said to be coherent so sources that maintain a constant phase with respect to each other phase with respect to each other see normally if you take any two light sources like if you were to simply take two light bulbs then they are not coherent because i mean there's no way in which you could determine that they are at a constant phase with each other the lesson is continued in part 2 of this series